So tomorrow is my walk at Clive Marshall Nature Reserve with the warden Bernard Bishop. Um, hopefully it will help. I'm not sure. It's going to be early, it's going to be cold, but hopefully it'll be worth it. <sighs> Let's do it. My name is Ben. I'm an 18 year old college student at Norwich City College. Today, I'll be taking a walk with Bernard Bishop, the warden at Clyde Marsh's Nature Reserve. Despite my reluctance to go on the walk due to the extremely cold mornings in November, I still felt like good would come from it. I'm interested to meet Bernard because I feel like I could learn a lot from him. So, armed with my gloves and my favourite bobble hat, we set off on a misty Monday morning. Right, so I just got to Clay Nature Reserve. I am extremely cold, but I'm 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 excited, a little nervous. Right, so without further ado, I'm gonna go meet Bernard and go on the walk. Bernard, Ben, how are you? Nice to meet you, man. Nice to see Good you. To see you. We're walking today, aren't we? We're going for a walk. You're coming on the walk. You could have brought some better weather with you. Uh, what do you think of my shoes? Suitable? Well, you'd be all right. <laughs> And when it was purchased in 1926, my great grandfather okay. was the warden. Well, no, they weren't wardens then, they were watcher come keeper on here. Because it was still shot on until 1966, you see, it's still used for wildfiring. And then when he retired, my father was warden for 42 years. And I started working for the Trust in 1972. And I'm still here. Oh. <laughs> So it's a family. Yeah, it's, it's a been family. In the family. Are they all interested in this sort of like? Are they going uh, to be the warden? No, no, no. I, my son's got his own business. He's there. Oh. He has a fishing boat as well, so he goes okay. catching crabs and lobsters and that. Okay. My grandson at the moment is just sitting on a computer all day. You know, instead of coming out here, he enjoys it. You know, when he does come. Oh, I've done it all my life. I've, I've okay. spent. I live in the house just on the corner with the white oh, windows really? where I was born. So you know, it, it's it's. Someone said to me the other day, have you lived here all your life? I said, well, not yet. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Yeah. So shall we have a, have a walk? Go for a walk. See what we can see and see what we can do. Let's go for it. I've got to ask you about your grandson. Um, oh, yeah, Ben. Yeah. Benjamin, yeah. Is your son called... Oh, your grandson called Ben. Ben, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's appropriate. So you, um, you said that he likes to stay inside and do his thing. Oh, yeah, but he also, I mean... He still likes to come, but I don't get the impression that he spends his life on a computer. Of course he doesn't. He's, yeah. He loves coming out with me. And well, I'm, I'm in that, that sort of boat. I'm, I'm, I spend quite a lot of time inside. And yeah. it, 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 the reason I ask you is because it rubs off a bit on... My parents worry about it a lot. Oh, really? Yeah, they worry that I'm going to... I don't know, my dad just obviously wants the best of me, so always wonders that my brain's going to get fried or something. But well. he's... I just wonder how, how that makes you feel as a, well, a grandpa. I know it's not the same sort of situation, but as a grandpa. It's grandpa's. a completely different... You know, when I was when I was a lad, I spent my life in a in a boat, messing yeah. about with boats. My grandfather on my mother's side made the mussel boats that the you know the mussel canoes that they collect the mussels in, okay. and he had them in Clyde Key, and we would just spend our life in boats on the tide catching eels. You know, it's it's a complete different lifestyle. Yeah, well, much, much like your grandson, I, it's not like I don't do stuff. Like I do my my college course, but it's. Yeah, I do spend a lot of time inside, and I always wor like worry that my parents like get. I don't want to upset my parents, but at the same time, it's something that I enjoy doing. Well, yeah, this and is the thing. I mean, I've been fortunate that I've done something that I really enjoyed in my life. I've been, and I think that's a good thing if you can do something that you you enjoy. Uh, you know. Such a such a like for me at the moment, it's such a daunting question when people say, "Oh, what do you want to do when you're oh, God, like, ten so years, fifteen ten years, years time." And you just, oh, just, I just don't know, do you? No, you I don't, just don't no, have a clue no, at the no, moment. No, no. I mean, I've been very fortunate. That, you know, I've, I've just carried on the, yeah. the family tradition here. I've, I can say, honestly say that I've never been for a job interview. I've you never know, had a CV. Wow. No. Yeah, I just always assumed when I was younger growing up that everything would kind of fall into place. Yeah. Like yeah. that, 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 you know, I'd, I'd do something and then this would happen and it would just kind of, Oh, well, you'll, you'll find you'll find that everything people you know you, you think oh goodness me but things do fall into place, opportunities come along but what you have got to do Ben you've got 
grab up every opportunity. If you get the opportunity to, to do something that you really want to do, go for it and try your hardest to, to, to do it. Yeah. I woke up like one night before, uh, this is the main reason that I wanted to do this walk, is that um, I, I, had, I had this doubt in my head that I didn't want to do it, and it was just kind of, I thought, oh, okay, why well, I'm just having these doubts, everyone has doubts about things. But then I woke up and then I just had this immense feeling of I didn't want to do anything at all. This is hor it was horrible because in my head I knew that I wanted to do stuff. And then obviously this course as well, and that happened all weekend. And then Monday rolled around, and I was still feeling the same. So I took like half the, I think I took like the whole, I think it was the whole week off because I just didn't have the, any motivation, and no. I don't know why, and I still don't know why. But no, I feel like this sort of that's why I wanted to do this today. And when we come up with the idea to take me out here, I'd, I feel like this is going to kind of clear my head a little bit. Clear head. Well, what? I mean, an ideal place to, to clear your head, is. you know, you've got the lovely big open spaces. You don't feel hemmed in at all. No, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing what goes on in your mind. It's yeah. nothing worse than, yeah, right. than, than probably not wanting to do anything at all. So we'll walk on. Yeah, let's go. And uh, go a little further. So in terms of walking shoes, how do you think I'm doing? Do you well, think you're lucky it's not raining. <laughs> uh, if it had been raining, you would have been wet by now. Although I skipped over the tougher details when sharing my problems with Bernard, talking to him gave me a whole new perspective on them. It was more common and understandable than I first thought. The changes that I've seen in Clive's is just unbelievable. Yeah. We've lost every, just about everything that we had. We've still got a pub, we've still got a delicatessen. We've still got a shop that sells pottery and a lovely smokehouse, which is really brilliant. But when I was a child, we had everything. We had laundries, we had fish and chip shops, we had butchers, we had groceries. We had a school. The school is closed now. My son was at school when it closed in the 1970s. Now, of course, it's just a, a massive big holiday cottages. That hilltop behind my house here, we used to play the rest of the village at football. And now there's not a single young youngster living in there. And that's how it's changed. These are geese that stay here all year, they, they breed here. And then those are the Brent geese further over that migrate and they spend the winter here. They breed in Siberia and then they overwinter with us. And the widgeon the same, you see the widgeon flying above the breeze. Mm -hmm. Like other than being fascinated by the birds, do you find this like therapeutic in a way? I do. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, can I see. Can I can see why. Really. I can come and sit out here, and I'll have my binoculars around my neck, yeah. and and for a while I probably won't lift them up. Yeah. Especially yeah. if there's nobody in here. I can. And you can sit here. I can understand. And you that just, already. just, just take, take it all in. And you can see why you know people who probably who got a stressful life, people who a high powered life why they come out here and why they like to sit here and slowly just take it in and nice and peaceful. I can really, I can relate to that already and it's only been <laughs> even a couple of minutes. It's a nice change from cars and... <laughs> <laughs> As we left the highs and began to walk back, I was surprised of how Clyde can take you away and make you forget about the stresses that life throws at you. Bernard seemed to understand what I was going through and offered me some fantastic insight into solutions on how to help me solve them. As he showed me more and more of Clyde, I was slowly learning why people come here and why open spaces can clear your head. You don't have to come here. You know, you've got Braden Water right near by you, which is a big bird watching site. Uh, walk out on there, get talking to the people out there. Yeah. That'll help you, that'll help you identify the birds. So we'll take it from there. Yeah, it's been such a shock for my, my parents because they always see the side that I want them to see. Yeah. They always see the side that, because I, I hate to see them upset, so they always see Oh, the, yes, yeah. I've got to always make sure that I'm always happy around them yeah. because, yeah. you know, they don't want to worry. But it was such a shock to them to see me saying all this stuff, like they couldn't believe it, like it was. And before that, you were outgoing, you know, I mean, you'd be out and about yeah, and yeah. in town no. and around town. And... Shall we head back? Get back in the warm. Yeah, <laughs> cup of tea, <laughs> cup of tea. Go and have a cup of tea. Yes. 
So I just got back from the walk with Bernard. Um, just seeing the landscape has kind of cleared my head in a way. And it's quite therapeutic in that sense. And I feel like that maybe if I do this once a month or something, it might ease the load of stress that I might be under. It's been really interesting this morning, having a walk with Ben. Uh, the problems that he's had, obviously, it's something that he's got to sort out. Uh, I sympathise with him, in a way, because I had a spell several years ago now, where I was, I had depression, and it can, something that takes a lot of getting out of. Uh, I think I've opened his eyes to uh, the fact what's out in the wide world. I think he was impressed with the reserve. I think he was impressed with how it's run and, and the amount of work and the amount of management it's done. And I think he's gone home with a great impression of how a nature reserve runs, not just for the wildlife, but for the public as well.